to uh, start off this with uh, a reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2. Okay, We're going to look at verses 1 through 20. All right. And I think that's very appropriate for the, the time and the season. So I invite you to turn with me in your, in your Bibles, if you have them with you, or if you have it on your uh, favorite Bible app on your phone or your tablet, uh, to, to Luke chapter 2 starting with verse 1, and I invite you to read it along with me, okay, and uh, you can pause the video and, and until you find it, you know, whatever works best for you, and, uh, and we will read together, Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house, line of, the house and line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in, a, in cloths, placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David... A Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who were lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May Almighty God add his blessing to this, the reading of his holy word. Amen. And that's what Christmas is about. It's not about the decorations or presents or about get togethers. It's about the peace and love that the Lord brings. It's about the Savior of the world, the Savior of the sins, of, the Savior of our sins, coming to earth. Coming as a baby. Coming as one so, so seemed so lowly born, he had given up all the glory of heaven to come, become one of us. As scripture said, he calls him Emmanuel, God with us, giving up of himself so that one day that when he grew up, he would die for the sins of the world. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's, it's even more than just peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Yes, it, it is those things, and those are good things. But let's never lose sight of what this is really about, what this season is about, what, what this night and tomorrow will be about. It's about the birth of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, okay. our living, saving Lord, who came, he lived, he preached, he taught, he healed, he had compassion and mercy, he died on a cruel Roman cross for your sins and for my sins, and he rose again on the third day from the dead, from the grave, and he ascended back to to heaven and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And one day, one day soon, perhaps, he will come back again. Let's keep that in mind this, this Christmas season, okay? And I'd like to, I'd like to read something to you. It's called, Are You Ready? All right? 
It's a Christmas reading. Are you ready? So here we are, almost Christmas. Most of us have spent the last several weeks getting ready. Trees bought and decorated, gifts bought and wrapped, holiday parties, family gatherings, cookies left out for Santa, cards and letters sent far and wide, all wonderful. And here we are in this place, together with family and friends and neighbors, which is as it should be. Together we sing the familiar carols. We light and hold our candles. We retell that age-old story, Silent Night, Holy Night. Wondrous star led thy light. <clears throat> with angels let us sing, all beautiful, take it in. But here's the thing, for all our preparation, for all the beauty around us, I can't help but wonder if there is something more, something we miss in all of our planning and preparation, all of our decorations and gift giving. So much of what we spend time and energy and money on seems to have little to do with that simple, provocative, age-old story we read, we read together each year, the one I just read in the Gospel story so familiar we almost know it by heart. Gentle Mary, Stoic Joseph, shepherds in the field abiding, angels from realms of glory. A story so layered by over by tradition and Christmas card images and softened the glow of candles that, that the meaning and challenge of the story presents gets lost in the pageantry and of our celebration. You know the story, but maybe you missed the tension. Here it is. Caesar Augustus, Roman Emperor, self-proclaimed Son of God on one side, Jesus born in Bethlehem, laid in a manger, gospel-proclaimed God, Son of God on the other side, King Herod in his palace and on his throne in Jerusalem, or Mary and Joseph making their way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The Roman legions who patrol the countryside and the streets to impose their peace, or the heavenly hosts with their proclamation of peace on earth, God's good will to all. As we hear the story, we are left to ask ourselves and then decide, what is this story really trying to say? What side of the story will we choose as, as our own to guide and direct our living? And because the Bible is never just about then, but is also about now, and never just about them, but also about you and me, and because I believe there is something more to Christmas than Santa and reindeer, I wonder, what does all of this mean for us today? What does all of this mean for you today? With the world as it is, with your life as it is. So if any of this, on any level, rings true or tugs at your heart, let me ask, with everything else already neatly in place, if there is something in this story about peace on earth which weaves itself around some deep longing within you, how is it that you are going to get ready for that kind of Christmas? If there is something in this story about everyone having a place and not just the rich and powerful, and something in this story which bring into focus how you imagine life and the world that might be, should be, how is it, how is it you are going to get ready for that kind of Christmas? If there is something to the story about God with us, Remember, Emmanuel, that's one of the titles of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. That's what the word means. If that rings true, which tugs at your spirit, God with us, not God condemning us. God is truly his judge. And he does bring condemnation on those who reject him. But God is with us in this wonderful, complex, sorrowful, joyful thing we call life. 
is with us in the person of Jesus Christ. He came down to be as one of us, not to judge us or destroy us, but to provide salvation for us. Because we could never, we could never save ourselves. We can never be good enough. We can never attain the, the, the highest level. We, we can't, we can't will us ourselves into heaven. There's no, there's no work that's good enough that could wipe away the sins that we have committed. So God, the righteous judge, instead of sending down Jesus, the Messiah, to condemn us, he sent us Jesus, the Messiah, who saves us, frees us from our sins. And he is here. He is here. He is now. Just as you are. Just as we are just as they are, God with us, through Jesus Christ. So if there is something about this story, something about Christmas, which is much more than about trees and gifts and colored lights, carols and cards, let me ask, what are you doing to get ready for that kind of Christmas? A Christmas that celebrates love that came down at Christmas. I thank you for joining me today. We will have some extra videos in the description box below by some of the very, very talented people here on YouTube who uh, I, we, we feel that would go right along with this and help maybe help you celebrate this wonderful day. I pray that you, you're not alone this day, but, but even if you do find yourself alone and, and away from family and friends for, for one reason or another can't celebrate, know that you are not alone, that Jesus is with you, and that your brothers and sisters who love you are with you, and that we're to love one another. But as he said, love one another as I've loved you. Know that Jesus is with you. And he is with you this day. Remember to celebrate. There, that is something worthy of celebrating. The coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God with us. So I invite you to, uh, to, to watch some of the, video, the videos and, and, uh, and hopefully you will be blessed this Christmas. We thank you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his light shine upon you and give you peace in this season. We pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit.